good afternoon everyone um, my name is Sandy Lekini I am the chief director for African multilateral economic relations within the DT Department of Trade and Industry of South Africa um, I'm going to speak speaking today about the African con continental free trade area as the African air uh, integration uh, it's about it's about uh, ensuring that there is a, 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 a long-term integration of the, of, of the continent. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do, we're trying to move away from having an economy as a continent which is small and fragmented as it was divided up by uh, colonialism. So as South Africa, we want to take a developmental approach to integration in that we don't want only to be talking about tariff liberalization at the border, but also to deal with issues of uh, underdeveloped production structures and inadequate infrastructure. And therefore, uh, our integration goes beyond market integration, mainly trade liberalization, but to also include infrastructure development and industrial policy cooperation in order to foster regional value chains across countries in the, in, on the continent. Uh, if we go to the slide on intra-Africa trade, um, the reason we want Afri intra-Africa trade is because the continent of Africa uh, has a very low level of trade with the rest of the world. We account for just 3% of world trade. Uh, intra-Africa trade uh, is only accounts for only 16 to 18% of trade amongst African countries. Compared to uh, Asia, which trades about 52%, North America, 50%, uh, and the EU uh, trades 70% with each other. So there's very little trade amongst African countries. So, so therefore, uh, we want to ensure that uh, we do more trade amongst each other. Uh, even though intra-Africa trade is very low, we see that uh, we mostly export commodities such as oil and minerals to the rest of the world. So basically, we, we, we feed industrialization and manufacturing in the rest of the world, whereas we do little of, on our own amongst each other. Uh, and again, although uh, intra-Africa trade is low, we also see that we trade mostly with Europe and the rest is with Africa itself. And also, of seven African countries, they see African, the African market as, as, as one of the second most important compared to uh, Europe. And uh, also, over three quarters of inter Africa trade happens within regional blocks within the continent. And what is also important about inter Africa trade is that we mostly trade with each other value-added products compared to what we do with the rest of the, of the world, where we export mostly uh, commodities. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we will find that uh, for South Africa, Africa is of strategic importance in that um, it's amongst the top uh, export markets for us after the EU uh, and China. And uh, for South Africa, it also accounts for 26% of our exports. And in 1919, so in 2019, 56% of what we export to Africa were mostly uh, manufactured products. Whereas we, if we look at what we export to Europe and, uh, and the Americas region, we export commodities. And for us, the Southern region is the, is the biggest block uh, to which we export on the continent in that it accounts for 70% of what we export to, to the continent. And the key markets uh, in the region is Botswana, Namibia, Mozambique, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Uh, in terms of the key features of the, of the African continental free trade area, uh, the, the AFCFTA sets out a framework for liberalizing trade across Africa. It also uh, works to ensure that uh, uh, we harmonize trade rules uh, and in order to grow intra-Africa trade. Uh, what it does uh, is that it preserves the existing regional uh, economic communities. So we build on the existing ones, such as SADC. We don't create new ones. So we build on the, on, on, on the existing one and reach across and trade with other regional blocks outside the, these other blocks that are already there. 
Uh, also, uh, this involves negotiations across regional, regional blocks where there is no existing preferential trade arrangements. And also, the aim is to ensure that there is reciprocity of trade across blocks that are trading each other. So if you look at the benefits as to how we benefit from this uh, Africa free trade area, the aim is to ensure that there is a progressive elimination of tariffs amongst each other, and that uh, we've got rules to manage non-tariff barriers. And also we want to make sure that uh, we facilitate cooperation uh, on customs and trade facilitation, as well as transit. Of so it also ensures that uh, there is an enhancement of legal certainty and the of market access. And also uh, it establishes a, a process for dealing with the dispute settlement. And also it ensures that uh, there is industrialization as well as employment creation on the continent. And also by creating a larger African market, we also are creating an environment in which uh, the continent becomes attractive for investors. If you can go to the next slide. Uh, in terms of uh, progress, and we have done very well in that uh, we only started these negotiations in 2015. Uh, and then in a very short period of time, we are talking now in 2021 as a continent that has got a free trade area. And, and, and this comes from the time in which the AU trade heads of states decided to set legal instruments for uh, establishing the free trade area in 2018. And then in December last year, uh, the summit decided that uh, we should start trading from the 1st of uh, January this year. And in terms of progress, of the 55 countries uh, that are members of the, of, the, of the continent, of the AFCFTA, only one is not, is not assigned, and 36 have ratified. Uh, in terms of legal uh, architecture, the AFCFTA establishes a free trade area. The components of the agreement is mainly, is mainly a protocol on trading goods followed by trade and services. That is phase one of the agreement. It involves services and goods. Uh, and then of course, we've got a protocol for dealing with uh, procedures for dealing with settlements of disputes. And then thirdly, uh, we also will be starting negotiations for phase two and phase three, which will cover competition, uh, intellectual property, investment and digital trade. And of course, the, this agreement also established the Secretariat, which is currently based in Accra, Ghana. Next slide. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, modalities, um, the aim is to ensure that 90% uh, of uh, tariffs are liberalized over a period of five years for uh, developing countries on the continent. And then for LDCs, namely least developed countries, uh, this will happen over a period of longer, uh, which is 10 years. And then the remaining 10% of trade uh, are mostly in, in the areas which are sensitive. And the aim is therefore that 7% of that will be paralyzed over 10 years, uh, for, for uh, uh, over five years. And then for this developed country, it will be over 13 years. And then 3% of sensitive products will be excluded from trade. That is from a uh, removal, removal of tariffs. Uh, and the aim is that uh, this phase done will happen in equal installments of, of, of say 20% per annum uh, for South Africa uh, over a period of, uh, of five years. Uh, and also um, the, uh, on the services side, the, we've agreed on five sectors, namely uh, financial, tourism, transport, and communication. Next slide. In terms of uh, how this trade happens, uh, the summit uh, put conditions that will allow for this trade to start flowing from the 1st of January. And in doing that, it recognized that uh, not all the countries on the continent were on the same level uh, of development and readiness to implement. So based on that, uh, it understood that uh, not all countries have ratified, not all of them have submitted tariff offers, and not all rules of origin were agreed. And therefore the ramifications were that uh, we will continue to negotiate uh, uh, rules of origin uh, while also working for members to prepare uh, their tariff offers. 
So thus far, we've agreed, we managed to ensure that uh, we, we have um, 81% of rules of origin uh, finalized. So now we need to move towards the 90%. And critical, critical to this is we want to move up the value chains and ensure that uh, there is uh, integration in terms of uh, producers on the continent and that the benefits accrue mostly to African countries and not uh, more to uh, external parties outside the continent. If we move to the next slide. And therefore, I, I think the, the, the conditions now for uh, trade to flow uh, is that um, four minimum conditions must be, must be met. The first being that uh, uh, all members that want to benefit or their customs union, they must have ratified the agreement. The second condition is that, uh, the second condition is that the submission, uh, of, of, of these tar tariff offers must be technically sound in that 81% of tariff lines must have rules of origin. And secondly, within countries that are part of this agreement, they must have put in place domestic, domestic legislation to administer imports that are coming in. And uh, lastly, the parties that are agreeing to offer each other market preferential access, uh, they must do that on the basis of recipro reciprocity uh, according to, to modalities that have been agreed. Uh, right now, lastly, in terms of uh, the current status, uh, so far, uh, tariff offers have been submitted by nine member states uh, and, and four customs unions. Uh, in in, on the continent, the, the customs union that we that have submitted offers are SACU, which is the Southern African Customs Union, CIMAC, which is the customs union in the Central African region, and ECOWAS, which is the customs union in West Africa, and EAC, which is the customs union in East Africa. So all these, they amount to 41 member states that have submitted offers. And then on trade and services, 34 member states have submitted offers. 22 of these uh, offers uh, are from regional economic communities, namely ECOWAS and EAC, who have submitted these offers respectively. Now, the next steps going forward will be priority will be for the implementation of the decision to operationalize the FCFDA. And uh, within this agreement, there's a built-in agenda. Even though trade is not flowing, so there's a built-in agenda to finalize the remaining uh, issues, uh, namely dealing with the negotiations of rules of origin, as well as the finalization uh, of tariff offers uh, amongst groups that amount to 90% of product lines. And then we have yet to conclude the negotiations on trade and services. Um, amongst the issues also we have made was to ensure that uh, we put in place a protocol on women in trade. So that is still under consideration. And lastly, uh, in terms of uh, what remains to be done, uh, it, it, or challenges is that uh, free trade agreements uh, produce gains and losses in production. So meaning there'll be losers and, 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 and beneficiaries of this thing. And also the challenges for many countries is that as they liberalize trade, they lose productive uh, capacity because of competition coming from in. And also uh, as a result, we want to ensure that all members benefit. And uh, we are managing, managing gains and losses uh, in order to ensure sustainability of the agreement. Uh, and also we, have con we, we also want to deal with the issues of concern that uh, trade from other countries may go from outside the continent into, through other countries and pass on as made in Africa. So we want to deal with that. So to deal with those issues, we want to ensure that we enforce and monitor a stronger rules of origin and ports of entry. Uh, in terms of remaining challenges, we want to make sure that uh, uh, we deal with the issues of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which is highly uh, uh, difficult for us on the continent. We also want to ensure that uh, uh, this continental integration is sustainable and that benefits are shared across. 
and also this integration uh, must also be accompanied by industrialization and regional value chains and not just be a flow uh, compute for, for imports from other countries. Uh, we see this as a very realistic uh, vision, uh, which eventually we are sure that uh, Africa is integrated and that it is developed. So I can leave it at that. Thank you very much.